from around the globe. It's the Cube with digital coverage of AWS Public Sector Online. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Cube's coverage of AWS Public Sector Summit. Virtual, of course, this is the Cube Virtual. We are here sheltered in place in our, our quarantine studio. I'm John Furrier, host of the Cube. Got a great guest here, Cube alumni, Ken Eisner, who's the Director of Worldwide Education Programs for AWS Amazon Web Services. Ken, great to see you. Thanks for coming on. This is going to be a great segment. Looking forward to chatting. Thanks so much, John. Great to talk to you again. You know, obviously Cube Virtual, Public Sector Summit Virtual, We've been virtualized as a society. Obviously the pandemic and all the things that are going on around it has been pretty crazy. And one of the things that's most notable is the impact on education. Um, uh, New York Times this morning and many published reports around the impact to college education, not only economics on the campus side, the state of the people and the, and the society and COVID-19 has pushed schooling online for the foreseeable future. What's your reaction is you're in charge. You've done a lot of work on a foundational level to get Amazon educational programs out there. Take a minute to explain how, how this has impacted uh, you guys and your ability to bring that educational stuff to the, to the, to the foreseeable future. Yeah, uh, the, the first thing I'd say is um, this, this truly is an absolutely unprecedented time. Um, there, the move from virtual instruction excuse me, from in-person classroom instruction into the virtual world at such you know, amazing scale and rapidity um, is something that yeah, educational institutions weren't ready for, they, they couldn't be ready for it at this time. It, we ha had to enter it with amazing le levels of empathy um, for what was going on on the ground in K-12 schools and higher ed schools with our educational technology and publisher providers. So uh, I think the first thing was we had to, to for, for the speed at which it happened, we did have to step back and look at what was going on. There are some changes that are happening in the immediacy and there are some things that COVID-19 has, has sped um, educational institutions around the world to, to look at. And AWS is working with those K-12 providers, higher educational providers, teachers, and so on, on that switch, whether it's providing infrastructure that move into online learning, helping teachers as they prepare for this sort of uh, new normal. Uh, you, some of examples of what has happen. Uh, we've been working with the University of Arizona uh, to help them stand up contact centers. With the onset of, of COVID and students and teachers you know, being pushed into you know, their home environment or into virtual environments to give instruction, to receive instruction, there have been a lot of uh, calls that happen in virtual environments to staff to help them support this. And so we stood up with the University of Arizona and Amazon Connect to help staff provide mobile solutions through their cell phone or computer for, yeah, for students. I want to get your thoughts. No, I want to get your thoughts. Absolutely. I talked to Andy Jassy about, about this and Teresa Carlson, yeah, Carlson as well. As well. About agility. About this is the Amazon wheelhouse. I mean, you guys have gone into the IT world now. I mean, obviously developers, you, you know, went cloud native, you win that market, you won the enterprise IT market. But the reason why is that you took an old school, outdated, antiquated system of IT and made it agile. That seems enough, this is the country I've had with Teresa and Andy about education and public sector. The modernization is happening, but there's also the triage that you guys have to do now in terms of getting people online. So what specifically are you doing to help education customers continue their instruction online? Because they still got to execute. They still need to provide this discussion around the fall window coming up. Um, yep. You got to have the foundational things. I know you've done that, but it's hard. So what's the difference between triage? When do you come out of this mode of, okay, here you go. And how do you get people set up? And then how do they transform and reinvent? I yeah, I, at this time, the disaster recovery 
from yeah, how do you get in that phase one with this immediate move was so prominent. Um, and we're trying to work through that phase one and sort into sort of the phase two delivery of education, um, which is you know, moving with scale and moving with agility into this world. It, speed and agility are really going to be the new normal for education. There were some advances that just weren't happening quick enough. You know, students should always have access to 24 seven learning um, and access into that mobile arena. And they, they weren't having that. Um, w several things that we did was we looked at you know, our infrastructure and were some of those key infrastructure elements that help with both learning and work you know, remotely. Um, there were things such as Amazon you know, Work Docs, which enables you know, the, the virtual or, you know, workspaces, which enable virtual desktop environments, and AppStream, which enables you know, apps to be streamed you know, through virtual arena onto your, your mobile or your, your desktop. Um, yeah, Amazon Connect, as I, as I mentioned uh, before, there were services that were vital in helping speed into the cloud, those quick bursts into the cloud. And so we enabled some of those services to have special promotional or free rates for a given time period. And we have actually now extended that offering into the fall, into September 30th. So first we had to help people really quickly. With educators, so I run this program, AWS Educate, which is Amazon's global program to provide students and educators around the world with resources needed to help them get into cloud learning. But what we saw was that teachers around the world were not prepared for this massive shift. What we did to help that preparedness is we looked to our educators. We found that we did a survey over the weekend and found that 68% of them had significant experience or enough experience in teaching distance or online virtual education to potentially leverage that for other educators around the world. So we, and the other thing is teachers are really eager to help other teachers in this move, especially as they saw and they empathize with whether it was the panic or confusion or best practices in moving into that online arena. Um, so we saw both that they had that experience and a mass willingness to help other people. And we immediately you know, spun up a series of educator to educator you know, help tools, whether it was Amaris Valdez or Noah Gift and uh, Doug Berman providing webinars and office hours for other educators around the world. We also did a separate tech talks offering for students. So, there were there was the the help in scale, whether it's you know getting Blackboard as they ramped up to over 50x of their normal uh, load in 24 hours to help them deliver on that scale, uh, whether it was the Egyptian ministry that was trying to you know, had to understand how could they help students access the information that they needed. Um, in speed, and they worked with Thinky, which is uh, an ed educational technology provider, to provide access to 22 million students who who needed to get access online, or whether it was the Educator Mobilization Initiative that we ran through AWS, uh, AWS Educate, helps teachers have the resources that they needed with the speed that they needed to get online. This is, we are working, we are learning from our customers as this happens. Um, this is a moving target, but we're going to move from this you know, immediacy of pushing people you know, into that virtual space, into what's going to happen this summer as students need to recapture learning that they might have lost in the spring or you know, depending where you are worldwide, there's getting to your point, all K-12 higher ed and educational technology providers into the position where they can act with that agility and speed. And it's also helping 
you know, those educators as they go through this. We're learning from our customers every day. Yeah, I want to get into those some of those lessons, but one of the things I will say, you know I'm really bullish about what you do. Uh, getting cloud education, I think, is going to change uh, the literacy and also job opportunities out there. I'm a huge a believer that public sector is the next growth wave, just like IT was, and it's almost the same movie, right? You have you know, inadequate systems, it's all outdated, you need, these workloads need to run, and they need to run effectively, which you guys have done. But the interesting thing with COVID is it, it, it essentially exposes the scabs and the uh, uh, out right. there because you know, online has been an augmentation to the physical space. So when you pull that back, people like me go, wait a minute, I have kids, I'm trying to understand this learning impact. Everyone sees it now, it's almost like it's exposed, whether it's under provisioned VPNs or Blackboard's not working, and everyone's pointing their fingers, it's your fault. And, it's the, and so you, you brought this up, there's now stakeholders whose jobs depend upon something that's now primary that wasn't primary before, whether it's the presenter, the content presenter, the, the teacher, certainly high availability IT. <laughs> um, all these things are just under huge pressure. So I got to ask you, what are the key lessons and learnings that you have seen over the past few months that you could share? Because people are shell-shocked and they're trying to yeah. move faster. Yeah, so first of all, yeah, speed and agility and education are the new normal. They should have been here for a while. They need to be here now. When you've got a 30-year you know, textbook, you're ruling over education. When students need to get the skills of tomorrow today, um, we need to be adapting quickly in order to give those students those skills, to give educational institution those opportunities. Every institution needs to be you know, enable virtual education. Every institution needs to have disaster recovery solutions, and they weren't in place. These solutions need to be comprehensive. Students need access to devices. Teachers need access to you know, professional development. Um, we need you know, contact centers. You know, we worked with Los Angeles Unified School District, not just to stand up a, a contact center, which we did with you know, Amazon Connect, but we also connected their high school seniors to with headphones. I think we provide 132,000 students with headphones. We are you know, helping to source with through our Amazon business relationship devices for everybody. Every student needs access in their home. Every student needs access to great learning and they need it on demand. Teachers need that readiness. I think the other thing that, that's happening is the whole world is, again, speeding through changes that probably should have happened to the system already. Yeah. That virtual learning is vital. Another thing that's vital is lifelong learning. Um, we're finding that, eh, and we probably should have already seen this, is everybody needs to be a student throughout their entire life, and they need to be streaming in and out of education. The only way that this can be properly done is through virtual environments, through the cloud, and through an access to on-demand learning. Um, we believe that this, that the work that's being done, I was actually talking to some people in Australia the other day, and they're saying, you know, the government is moving away from degree centricity and moving into you know, more modular stackable education. We, we've been building AWS Educate to stack to the job, to stack to careers. Um, and that type of move into education, I think is also being sped. So we're, you know, we're seeing the, that move you know, ap absolutely accelerate. We're also seeing the need to accelerate the speed to research. You know, obviously, with what's go on, gone on with COVID-19, there is a need for tools to connect our researchers to cures, to diagnostic um, opportunities. We've worked with the University of British Columbia, Vancouver General Hospital, and the, the Vancouver, um, I'm, I'm going to get this, uh, the Vancouver Coastal Health Research Unit, uh, Institute to develop, to use Amazon SageMaker to speed AI di diagnostic tools. So that, that push towards research is absolutely vital as well. We just announced a $20 million 
you know, investment in helping, you know, speed that, that research uh, to market. So education needs to operate at scale. Education needs to operate at speed and ed education needs to deliver to a changing customer. And we've got to be partners on that journey. Yeah, and I think I would just add reinvent, a word you guys name your conference after every year. This is a reinvention opportunity, clearly. Um, and you know, I was talking to some other parents, it's like, I'm not going to send my kid to school online learning for Zoom interviews, Zoom, uh, I mean, Zoom, Zoom classes. Um, I'm like, hey, you know, go get a cloud data engineering degree from Amazon Educate because they'll have a job like that once they put it on LinkedIn. You, the job skills are out there, the jobs are needed and the skills aren't. So I got to ask you, you know, with this whole reskilling, whether it's a gap year student in between, um, you know, semesters while this takes care of or upskilling people on the job, this is huge. Um, World Economic Forum said by 2020, half of the employees will need to be um, reskilled or upskilled. This is a huge impact and even more focused with COVID-19. That, that, that's absolutely correct. Yeah, you know, I think one thing that's happened is we're yeah, cloud computing has been the number one LinkedIn skill for the past four out of five years. The the skill whether it's software development in the cloud, cloud architecture, you know, your data world, or cybersecurity and other operational roles, those are going to be you know in the most demand. Those are the skills that are growing, and we need to be able to prepare people for roles in technology. The lifelong worker, the reskill, um, upskill opportunity is absolutely vital. Gap year is going to be available for some students, but we also got to look at you know, how the this the how COVID nineteen can accelerate gaps between students. Every student needs access to a high quality education. Every teacher needs to be equipped with the latest professional development. And we've got to focus like a laser, not just on the people who could afford a gap year or the people who, you know, who are going to you know, some schools who actually you know, had solutions that could immediately push their kids into their, their, their youth, their you know, students in college, or even you know, employees who needed those reskills were, were all home. Um, but it also needs to extend into you know, the middle of you know, the middle of Los Angeles and the, and you know, into low income students in in Egypt. Um, I was really you know, excited. We were we've been working with Northern Virginia Community Colleges, as I think you know, they were one of the lead institutions on launching an associate degree um, in the cloud. They took their courses and offered what they call a jump year to 70,000 high school senior or high school students in Northern Virginia, in the Northern Virginia area, uh, including enabling some of our cloud computing courses or the work courses that we worked on with them to those students. So you know, those <laughs> new partnerships, yeah. that extension of you know, college into high school and you know, college into reskill, upskill is absolutely vital. But institutions need to be able to move fast with the tools that the cloud provides you know, into those arenas. Well, you know, I think well, you've got a really hard job to do there. It's foundational. I love what you're doing. And you know me, I've been harping, people who watch the Cube know that you know, I'm always chirping and, and talking about how the learning is non-linear, it's horizontally scalable, there's different applications. You can't have an application for education. It's a series of different things. The workload of learning is completely different. I think, you know, to me, what you guys are doing right now is setting that basics foundation infrastructure. It's like the EC2 S3 model, then you got more on top of it, platform. And I think ultimately the creativity is going to come from the marketplace. Whoever can Absolutely. build those workloads in a very agile, scalable way, to meet the needs because let's face it, it can't be boring. Education has got to be robust, resilient, <laughs> and got to deliver the payload. And that's going Absolutely. to be customized applications that have yet to be invented, reinvented. Absolutely, hopefully we're jump-starting that next wave of innovation, spreading you know, the opportunities you know, to, to all students. Hopefully we are really looking at those endemic issues in education 
and following leaders like you know University of Arizona and what the Ministry of Education um, in in Egypt has done, but and Northern Virginia Community College. Hopefully, we are you know really taking this the opportunity of this disaster to invent on behalf of our students and bring in you know forward to the 21st century as opposed to. You know, just looking at this, uh, you know, navel gazing, what did we do wrong in the in the past? This is an exciting opportunity, albeit a you know, sc- you know obviously you know, a scary one as we're you know all dealing with this with this pandemic. There's no doubt once we retrench and and get some solid ground post COVID-19. It's a reinvention and a reimagined growth market opportunity because you got changing technology changing economics and changing expe- expectations and experiences that are needed. These are three major things going down right now. Absolutely, absolutely. And it, to your point, you know, the retraining of workers, the upskill, the, the great thing is that you know, governments realize this imperative as do educational institutions and obviously you know, students. This is a, and we've seen like the, what educators can do when they, they want to help you know, other educators. This is this is an opportunity you know, in our society to really look at every at everybody as a as a constant learner. We're a constant learner from from our customers, but everybody there there is no end to education. It cannot be terminal, um, and this is an opportunity to really provide the students learners with skills that they need in an on demand fashion. You know, at at all times and rethink, re-innovate, reinvent the way we look at education in general. I'll amend Jeff Bezos is day one. It's a new day one, right? So, you know, th- there it is. We've got to reinvent. Ken, you're doing great work. Director of Worldwide Education Programs, Ken Eisner with Amazon Web Services. Certifications and degrees in cloud computing will be the norm. It's going to happen. And again, if you're a cloud data engineer, data scientist, you're going to get a job. I mean, no doubt about it. So thanks so much for sharing your insights. Really appreciate it. Thank you. John, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Okay, Ken Eisner here inside the Cube virtual coverage of AWS Public Sector Online Summit. We've been virtualized. I'm John Furrier, your host. Thanks for watching.